Uh, hello, welcome to the Game Dev Meetup 87. Uh, this time we have uh, something new. Uh, we have another Game Dev Meetup in uh, Liepaja. And uh, let's, uh, let's see what, how, how they are doing there. So uh, I give uh, a word to, to our Liepaja friends. <laughs> hey. hey, hello from Lepaya. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. So uh, let me introduce this uh, cool, uh, cool community, uh, Lepaya Game Dev community. This is our first meetup, and uh, my name is Agate. I'm from the city, and uh, I'm the advisor on IT and smart digital solutions. And I'm really glad that this thing is happening in Lepaya, and we want to let you know that we have full support for for Game Devs. So uh, let me give the word to, to Arvis and uh, let him tell <laughs> more about this meetup and why is it happening. Okay, uh, it's, uh, it's very... Uh, <laughs> it's a very exciting thing that it's happening and uh, it's first time here in Lepaya. Le and uh, I'm very glad and uh, I, I feel well about uh, people we gathered together here in Lepai. It's first time, and it's a great thing. <laughs> yes, and uh, it's happening because there are people who want to create good things, uh, create games, and work together, come together, learn together. And I think that's the main reason why we are here now in Lepai. We want to start something new in game in game development here. Okay, uh, that's be all from me. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, Elvis. Okay, thank you, and uh, hope uh, you will you will do it uh, next meetups too. And uh, let's start with uh, our only presentation today due to technical uh, problems. We have only one presentation today, so. Uh, Let's start with uh, Andris Zitmanis Zichmanis and Yuri Sozolinc will tell us, uh, will guide us, uh, guide the newbies to the game development. So here you go. Uh, host disabled attendee screen sharing. <laughs> I <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, are we ready to start? Okay, uh, so uh, hello, my name is Andrew, I'm Giraffe, and this is my comrade uh, Yuris. Yuris. Hello, <laughs> man. Uh, we're from Team Olymps, uh, fa a fairly new face into the game development society of our country. And uh, we're here to talk about the newbies' insight into game development. Uh, at least the insight that we, we experienced. So, uh, before we really get into this, I guess we should probably tell you why, like, what have we done, what's, why we're important at all. Um, so we just started basically last year with, um, you're going to be able to see later a, a bit of a roadmap. Um, this is basically all the competitions we've been in in uh, uh, chronological order. We started out with some basic um, student competitions and, well, we moved on. Um, right now we're also working on our own game concept and we're, we're basically a fully fledged team now. Um, basically, how it started was uh, just two guys after Latvi's Informatics Olympiad just oh, met up and decided, hey, might as well do something else. And we uh, participated in LATTA, 
last year. And there we got third place, I believe. Then we moved on to Ventspils, got third place again, I believe. And at that point, we already were three people. We got another person from school. And then, then everything started really with Game Hack 2020, when we created our first real game dev team. Um, it was me, Andris, um, Andris from earlier, and another guy. Um, <laughs> yes. And baseball, well, yeah. Basically, we sort of just happened, and eventually we're a six-man team now. Um, so, I guess let's get into the most, most important part. How to make a game. The oh. style. <laughs> yes. So, first of all, our game-making process is not very refined. We are beginners, so take everything with a large grain of salt. Step one, core mechanic. Essentially, our last two games have been VR games, but before that we did um, an alchemy game and we've done uh, just a 3D smithing game. Basically, we just decide one random thing that we're kind of passionate about. It's really important that your core mechanic, your first idea is something you can be passionate about, something you really, really like. For us, it's the art. For you, it might be platformers. It might be, honestly, whatever. It's just important that you know what you're doing and that you want to do it. And step two is, well, that's a step too far. Well, find a team. I guess Andrew could tell us more about that. So, uh, to find a team, it's very important to, to know what kind of people would agree with your thoughts. And if not, you look for random people who would happen upon your idea and find it attracting. Uh, it's also very, very nice if you can synergize with your teammates to better one's efficiency with uh, working one another, uh, as, as well as uh, keeping each other entertained on, under a high, in, high and intense pressures of a hackathon or any kind of game development contest or when working together as a team afterwards uh, on a full-fledged project. Yeah. And another thing that's really important when making a team is that you can rely on your other teammates. You, you, if you're going to start walking around, checking in on everyone, kind of seeing, okay, this guy's doing that, this guy's doing that, in a small team, you're not going to get anything done. <laughs> Let's be honest. In a small team, you need to be united. You need to know that this person is working, this person is working, everyone's working, everyone's working at their max speed, and we're trying our best to all get stuff done. And that's extremely important in hackathons, which is basically most of our experience, but also in also just game development. It's extremely important that you can just rely on your other teammates to do their job right and to do it passionately, I suppose. Um, and only step three, you might think this should be step one, but no, it's step three, brainstorm ideas. You have your core mechanic, let's do something with it. VR, hey, let's make a robot fighting game. That's what we're doing right now. We just thought, hey, that sounds interesting. And the important part, it's interesting to you and it's interesting to the people around you. Um, at this step, we'd suggest making a poll online or, well, I guess in person as well, but in the time of COVID, you can't really do that. Um, make an online poll and just distribute ide your ideas. See what people think. Hey, robot game, um, painting game, I don't know, something like that. And uh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, the best idea often always wins. Uh, it's also the one that your teammates are mostly most passionate about. Sure, uh, some, so someone may think of a different game that may be their favorite, but in the end, uh, the whole well, most of, the, most of the team participates in the brainstorming uh, part and uh, they're all passionate about doing it. Yes, it's also really important that your whole team agrees with the idea. If there's one person who doesn't really, really want to do it, then, well, they're not going to put, be putting in effort, obviously. Okay, step four. Uh, improve the best, dump the rest. Decide, okay, this idea is great. We've, we've, Made a poll, people agreed, yeah, we like this idea. Next, just, you know, you shouldn't really forget all other ideas, but kind of put them aside. You don't really need them to make your game. You can use parts of them, but don't get like uh, centered on, let's make this game, but also push everything aside. It's 
basically you take your one idea and you develop that. If, uh, let's say if you were a bigger studio, maybe you could do two games at once. But if you're a small studio like us, no, do one thing and do it well. That's what we found with the last few games at least. Okay, so step five, sort of the most important part, make a prototype. All right, so basically with making prototype is, is a great thing. Like once you start a bigger project, you try to focus on the entire game itself at once. Uh, in, in our view, it's, uh, it's worse than trying to do little steps, which are often the most important ones. Uh, but when you have a working prototype, it's a great basis of which you see what you need to improve otherwise than going instantly for the full-fledged game which often times requires immense testing and then when that fails the, the entire project just goes to waste yeah and another thing if if you can and honestly we'd suggest this in any case is start your game idea at a hackathon it's probably one of the best places to create your prototype because there's people working around you there's people working in your team it's a great environment for making a quick prototype of, of something you're passionate about. Hackathons work well for that, but also hackathons work well for continuing your idea later. But right now, we're just thinking about the prototype. We've, we're trying to make the best part of the game. You don't need to make, let's say, it's an open world RPG game. You, you don't need to make the whole world. You just need to make a, small, a tiny space, something you can show people. And that's sort of... Um, the next step, test it. Um, first, do it yourself. Find bugs and stuff like that. <laughs> and then <laughs> another important part is give it to other people. When you're working, you're, you start getting focused on the project and you start like ignoring tiny little problems with it. If it's multiple people agreeing that, let's say, hmm, what example could I give you? Um, game hack, when we made our uh, simulation game. Uh, combat, we felt was pretty good, but other people said it was clunky and sort of meh. <laughs> not <laughs> not the, yeah, not comfortable, exactly. Um, so by the end of it, we had improved it. And honestly, we thought it was better. It's important to listen to what other people say, even though they might have criticism, they might disagree with your core idea. You need to take that criticism in, uh, in account. You, you can't just give, give a person a game and expect them to love it. It's a prototype. And the important part is that you know what parts suck. You don't, you don't need to know what parts are great, you need to know what parts are bad. This is the step where you iron out all the bad things. And then, refine and refine and refine. This step might take weeks, it might take months, it may, ta may take years. For example, um, we've seen at least one game that constantly reappears in hackathons. It's one person working on a game. It's an interesting game. It's just takes time and this this is the really important step and this step might take actually way too long the important part is if you're not feeling if you're not feeling passionate put it aside and you know find something new find something new exactly but don't forget about it entirely if if it's a, just a small ro roadblock continue you're gonna have very difficult time working with the if you're working alone, if you're working in a team, there's always going to be problems. And it's important to not give up and not give up quickly. And that's, yeah, another thing. Um, right now, our team even is facing problems with people having work and people having lives and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, it's a problem. <laughs> what can you do? You find ways of assigning small tasks, splitting up large tasks into tiny, tiny bits and saying, OK, uh, I know you're busy right now, but you know the weekend's coming up. Do this one little task. Sure, and that's that's how we slowly start, you know, crawling. Even <laughs> as long as something's happening, it's good. And well, step nine, profit. <laughs> <laughs> no, profit isn't always the goal of it. Sometimes it's an it's a ha it's an accident, but it's a happy accident. <laughs> mm. uh, always a welcome one. Uh, you have to make. You have to be aware that uh, what you make is not always going to profit. Well, whilst sometimes it might not even be intentioned, but it, it could happen. Uh, after all, that's partly the reason why any of us make any game or anything. Aside from passion projects and stuff, yes. Yeah, profit uh, in the end is an important 
thing is an important part of your passion and uh, your motivation to continue pushing out projects and uh, working on your uh, loved hobby, I believe would be the correct word for it. Yes, and advertising, just gonna mention it here. Don't overdo it. <laughs> there are people who make games and then try to advertise the like on YouTube, on Facebook, on everywhere. It's good to advertise, but if the game is good, if let's say another let's say influencer picks it up and says this game is great, it's gonna pick, it's gonna take up steam and it's gonna grow organically. It's important to not overdo forced marketing, like Raid Shadow Legends, the game everyone <laughs> hates. Um, you need to find a game that's if if your game is fun, people are gonna play it. And hell, even if it's your if it's a small uh, user base, usually those user bases are the most dedicated. And if it's a small game, hey, that's awesome too. Um, so yeah, we say don't get too hung up on profit, but also don't forget about it. So um, I suppose our presentation was fairly short, but <laughs> um, I guess we could talk a bit more about our team at, at this point since I believe we have still quite a lot of time, right? Quite a lot. Okay. I don't know. Um, anyway, yes, our team is it consists of three programmers. That's me. That, that's just testers who I believe is even there possibly in Riga. Uh, Tom Zirbulis. That's the other guy I mentioned earlier in Game Hack. Um, and our team of uh, designers and business people. Yes. Um, essentially, we're a small team. We we work together, and sometimes it happens that. A person drops out for a few months, and that's that's perfectly okay with us. Um, as long as job, as long as the job gets done. Yes, exactly. Well, I guess the, um, that should probably <laughs> be it. We don't that, have much else. Yes, um, I suppose we're free for questions, but that was it. Thank yeah. you for your attention. Uh, thank you. Uh, yep. Applause. <laughs> Uh, so, do you have any questions? Yep. So, so the question is, uh, so you mentioned the profit in the end. And yep. uh, the question is, uh, you you participated only in the in in uh, hackathons and and game jams, and have you actually reached the profit phase? And if if so, uh, what did you do to actually earn the money? Uh, no. <laughs> um, like I said, we're just pretty much starting out. We have our project, our game project, and it's coming along slowly, but we haven't yet reached the profit stage. That's a fact. So you know. Maybe we're gonna sell out and you know do everything else, but we're we've sort of planned everything out as far as you can plan it out, and yeah, we haven't reached profit stage, but we're we're pretty sure we're gonna know approximately what we're gonna do once we get there. Okay, any other questions? Yep. C can you tell a bit more ab about your project that you are working on? Is it a mobile what? Yeah, what platform and how do you uh, plan to release it? To publish it or find uh, investors uh, or sponsors or what? What's your business plan? Um, we're currently working on a simulation game on VR for PC, and we plan to publish it through Steam. Uh, publish it ourselves because uh, uh, currently we have no reason to look for a publisher as we're not that big or uh, known in the public yet. Um, but the game itself uh, focuses on uh, mechanics of a player moving around with uh, elements of Beat Saber and or Gorn, if uh, people are familiar with uh, such a game. Calling it a simulation game is kind of very inaccurate. It's more of a battle game, yeah. It's like a beat-em-up genre of uh, multiple AI opponents coming up against you and uh, you, you having to fight through some or even hordes of them if necessary. Yeah, if any of you have played or seen the clone drone, and clone drone in a danger zone, imagine something similar. But in VR, our idea is basically, yeah, we're making a game where 
you're a robot and you're fighting other robots in a, an arena, basically fighting for domination. That's and, about it. And customizations. And Always <laughs> customizations. <laughs> of course. Okay, any, any other questions? So, so the question is, uh, why, why, why are you not going for the publisher? Like uh, you are a small developer, and and uh, uh, so uh, what's what's the reason behind not uh, wanting a publisher and publishing it yourself? <laughs> um, I suppose one of the reasons could be because we we don't really want to get into it right now because finding a good publisher is. I wouldn't say extremely difficult, but it, it is quite difficult. If you get stuck with a bad contract, then you're stuck. Um, they might even sink your project, possibly, if, if they have too much influence. Um, if you're a small game developer, uh, you can work with the publisher. It's not a problem if you work with the publisher. It's just um, it's going to be more difficult for you, because publishers are going to start asking for stuff. Let's say um, you sign a contract, and in two months, they want their, the game to be ready, even though your team can only do it in three, four months, maybe. Then, you know, it's better to work on your own pace, in our opinion, at least. But publishers are a good option. That is definitely a thing. If you're making a simpler game, you should be looking for a publisher. That is definitely a thing. But if the ambition is afoot, well, you're definitely going to need more time than the publisher will give, you, will give you. And that's not very well for profit on any side because it's going to take a lot of time. Okay, uh, another question from me. So uh, you said this, uh, dump the rest. So uh, how do you decide what to dump and what to leave in the game? Uh, that was more about game ideas. Essentially, you've created a bunch of game ideas and you just take what the one the best one but also actually good point what features to keep because usually when you have an idea the finished product product is going to be possibly even very different from what you started with so it's sort of just important to you know talk with your team talk with the people around you and also to get a few strangers involved possibly somebody who hasn't seen the game and they just look at it and say hey this feature is Terrible. Why? Why is it even there? Put it, take it out, or possibly they might suggest something. It's always important to when you're working on a game. Always important to be open for suggestions and just um, sort of improve your process as you go. You can't have one idea and just shoot for it. You should probably have something, a vague idea, but not everything perfectly planned out. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, then uh, thank you for the presentation and uh, please stay after after uh, this uh, meetup. Uh, let's have some chat. And uh, thank you all for uh, watching this uh, meetup and uh, see you on the 9th of September in the Game Dev Meetup 88. See you. Bye.